So is it a better choice to invest in individual dividend stocks or dividend ETFs? We are living in unprecedented times here in America in 2020, and that has been clear from the volatility experienced in the stock market. Anybody that's talking about investing in dividends probably has an opinion when it comes down to whether to invest in individual dividend stocks or dividend ETFs. Those that support dividend ETFs would say that there's no better way to get diversification and get dividend yields. Those of you out there who believe in picking individual individual dividend stocks would say that there's no better way to get the perfect balance of dividend yield and dividend safety. So who's right? This specific video was actually inspired by a recent comment I got on a YouTube video where I detailed nine different dividend stocks that were on sale due to the financial crisis we were experiencing right now. And that person, you know who you are, wanted to get more information about Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF compared to their dividend achievers ETF. And so I decided to just combine the subject. So in this specific specific video, we are comparing Vanguard's two dividend ETFs, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, as well as Vanguard's Dividend Achievers ETF. And we're going to compare that to five individual stocks in a dividend stock portfolio. And those five dividend stocks happen to be five stocks that I mentioned in the previous dividend video I put out. And in this video, we're going to talk about the three big key characteristics you have to look at when you're comparing dividend ETFs compared to individual dividend stocks. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video because I think you are going to be surprised by some of the information you see in this video. Specifically, in the end, whether it makes more sense to invest in individual dividend stocks or dividend ETFs. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end to find out. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Average Joe on Money here. And on this channel, we talk about all things personal finance that affect people like you and me, the average Joe. So whether it's building your very first budget, how to get rid of your consumer debt as quickly as possible, how to build your credit as well as manage credit cards safely and responsibly, and of course how to invest your money both for income now as well as for growth in the future. Either way, this channel is your one-stop shop. So I took a lot of time to make sure I did all of the in-depth analysis you need to have at your fingertips to make sure you can make an informed decision on whether you should be investing in dividend ETFs or individual dividend stocks. So if you find any value out of this video or if you learn something new make sure you hit that like button below it really helps out this video specifically with that pesky YouTube algorithm so if you're ready let's go ahead and jump over to my whiteboard and let's start the video whether we're talking about dividend stocks or dividend exchange traded funds we're absolutely talking about well, dividends and when we say dividends we mean income so when we compare these two Vanguard ETFs against a portfolio of five individual dividend stocks we're gonna look at different factors that affect the income we will receive from these investments. Specifically, three different factors. The first thing we're going to look at is the dividend yield, which indicates how much value we're getting based on the price that we paid. The second thing we're going to be looking at here is the dividend growth rate. If there's anything more important than the dividend yield, it's got to be the dividend growth rate. If a dividend stock has an excellent yield right now, but they're not growing their dividend at all, or they're growing it by a very small amount each and every year, then I'm going to pick a dividend stock that maybe has a lower yield right now, but has a much faster dividend growth rate. And the third thing we're going to look at is the dividend safety. Obviously, if we have concerns about whether or not a dividend is going to be paid, that kind of makes the whole foundation of investing in dividend stocks or dividend ETFs to begin with kind of a moot point. We're here for income, and if we're not getting dividends, we're not getting income. Okay, so we're talking dividend yield, dividend growth rate, and dividend safety. Who is going to come out ahead? Okay, so we're talking dividend yield first, and as we can see here with the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Index Fund, the dividend yield as of March 20th, which is, includes all of the meltdown in the stock market, 4.31%. When we look at the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund, we see a yield of 2.29%. Okay, so let's be clear on which five individual stocks are going to be included in the portfolio. 3M Company, Caterpillar Inc., Colin Frost Bankers, Genuine Parts Company, and McDonald's Corporation. And when we look at our five individual stocks in our five stock portfolio, we see winner, winner, chicken dinner, 4.70%. So this one's pretty straightforward, black and white. There's no gray area here. The winner based on dividend yield absolutely has to go to our five dividend stock portfolio. Dividend stocks one, dividend ETFs, 
zero. Let's go ahead and jump to our second characteristic. We're gonna talk about dividend growth rates. So when I'm talking dividend growth rate, just to make sure we're on the same page here, I'm talking about how much the dividend has increased year over year over the past year, over the past three years, over the past five years, and if applicable, over the past 10 years. I only look at individual dividend stocks that actually increase their dividend each and every year. And by the way, it's not enough for me just to have them increase it a little bit. They have to increase it by at least 5% for me to even take a second look at them. This is the part of the video where the dividend ETF model tends to break down a little bit. And let me explain why. If you look back here, you can see that the one, three, five, and 10 year dividend growth rate for the five individual dividend stock portfolio is 9.7%. 8% for three years, 7.7% for the past five years on average, and 7.9% for the past 10 years on average, which means that the dividend is growing by that percentage on average within the portfolio every single one, three, five, and 10 years, which essentially means, in case you haven't figured it out, every single year you get more money in dividends even if you don't get any more shares. One thing you'll also notice here is that the dividends are growing by more than inflation every year. And here is the real big fat problem with dividend exchange traded funds. Well, they're not really growing at all. They're not really consistent at all for that matter. As you can see here with respect to Vanguard's high dividend yield index ETF, if you look backwards at the quarterly dividends, they're just all over the map. 55 cents per share, 77 cents per share, 78 cents, 62 cents, 65, 73, 67, 63, 60, 64, 60, 59, 56, completely all over the map and definitely, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, not growing consistently. And unfortunately, the same thing goes for Vanguard's VIG, the Dividend Appreciation ETF. If you look backwards at the dividend history, it's just all over the map. Looking backwards from March of 2020, we have 59 cents per share, 55 cents per share, 47 cents, 51, 57, 49, 56, 39, 54, 43, 51, 42, completely all over the map. There is no consistency and absolutely not consistent growth. And when you juxtapose those two dividend ETFs against what I showed you in the five individual dividend stock growth model, they're growing every single year by more than inflation. So when you pick dividend stocks very intentionally with a dividend growth rate that outpaces at a minimum inflation but is actually growing each and every year, you win against the dividend exchange traded funds. Individual dividend stocks to dividend ETFs Nothing. Okay, let's move to our third specific characteristic we're gonna talk about, which is the safety of the dividend. And when it comes to dividend safety, this is probably where the supporters of dividend exchange traded funds think they have me in a corner because the truth of the matter is, and this is fact, dividend ETFs, because of the fact that they track an index and they track hundreds of companies, their dividend is not going away. Even if the current crisis causes a number of different dividend paying companies to start reducing their dividends, and that is going to happen by the way, well then the dividend ETF is just going to rebalance the next quarter and they're gonna continue paying out dividends based on the dividend paying companies in the index. So when it comes to dividend safety, both Vanguard's VYM and Vanguard's VIG are a lock. When it comes to talking about dividend safety for individual stocks, that's not really a hard and fast yes or no, because there's a lot of gray area involved. There's lots of different metrics that matter, especially when it comes down to which actual dividend stocks are in the portfolio. There are a lot of things to consider when we talk about dividend safety. When it comes to the individual companies inside of the portfolio, how long have they been paying dividends? for five years, 10 years, or 50 or 60 years, because that makes a big difference. What sector is the dividend paying company in? Is their business vital to the US economy or is it maybe a discretionary spending item? Additionally, we need to have an understanding of how much of a company's cash flows and profits are going to the dividend. If a company is using every single cent of their profits and free cash flows to pay the dividend, because they have to pay the dividend and they have to make sure that it's continuing to increase every year, that is a lot lot less safe than a company that's only paying out half of their profits to the dividend. All of these factors are important, so let's talk about these five individual companies and how they rate on this scale. By the way, did I let you know that all five stocks in the portfolio have had their dividends paid out and increased every single year for at least 26 years, some of them as high as 62 years? When we talk about dividend consistency and dividend history, then these five companies have it. 
Genuine Parts, 64 years of consistently increasing dividends. 3M Company, 62 years. McDonald's, 44 years. And both CFR and Caterpillar, 26 years. Clearly, these companies have a strong history of paying out not only a dividend every year, but an increasing dividend every single year. Let's talk about how these companies fit into the United States economy. You're gonna see right away there is no discretionary spending here, except for McDonald's, but you know, a lot of people out there consider McDonald's a need versus a want, so I digress. The 3M company is in the industrial sector, but it makes a lot of different products that we as Americans use every single day of our lives, not likely to go away anytime soon. Caterpillar Inc. makes construction and machinery equipment. That's not going away anytime soon. Colin Frost Bankers is in the banking industry and they have a really strong profile, which I'll get to in just a second. Genuine Parts Company makes auto parts and they've been paying out dividends for 64 years. They have consistently paid dividends through many different stock market recessions and they just continue on each and every day, day in, day out, making auto parts, making money. And then of course we have McDonald's. And you can definitely make the case that McDonald's is a discretionary item, but the fact of the matter is McDonald's is ingrained into most Americans' lives and that company is not going anywhere anytime soon, even when you factor in the current crisis. The last thing I look at when it comes to dividend safety is the payout ratio. Now I've said in previous videos that most people calculate the payout ratio for a dividend based on the net income, specifically the dividends paid divided by net income as a percentage. And I don't really use that formula. You know why? Because it sucks. I have major problems with the dividends to net income payout ratio. As a result, I don't use dividends to net income. I use something a little bit more specific to what dividends are derived from, which are cash, specifically cash flows. So I look at the dividends compared to the free cash flow from the business. The free cash flows, by the way, for a company is the money left over after profits and after they have already invested in their infrastructure and other parts of the business. This specific dividend payout ratio can also be a good leading indicator to show when a dividend may be at risk of being cut. Whenever I'm looking at individual dividend paying stocks, I'm looking for companies that have a dividend payout ratio based off of free cash flow of less than 75%. And what's really cool about these individual dividend stock companies is all five of them have dividend payout ratios based on free cash flow of less than 70%. Some of them, including CFR, had it at 35%. Not only does this indicate that the dividend is safe, but it also shows a ton of room for it to grow into the future. So when it comes to dividend safety, it all comes down to whether or not you are picking quality dividend stocks that have a history of growing their dividend for many years, that have safe dividends based on their payout ratio, based on free cash flow, as well as what sectors of the economy are these businesses in. All those factors can lead to different outcomes and different scenarios, but the truth of the matter is, in this specific scenario, you can't make a case that these five individual stocks are not safe. Sure, you can make the case that the dividend ETFs are more safe, but I'm not really interested in more safe, I'm just interested in safe. So for the purposes of this review, we'll call it a tie. You know what, I'm feeling a little bit gracious today and I'm feeling a little bit bad for dividend ETFs over there because they don't have any points, so I'll give them one courtesy point. At the end of the day, you can make a strong case for investing in individual dividend stocks depending on your selection criteria and of course when you buy into these stocks because if you buy in when the prices are really high, your yield is going to be really low. But picking individual dividend stocks is not for everybody and I recognize that. So if you're somebody out there that says, hey, you know what, Joe, you've made a strong case for individual stocks, but I'm I'm gonna pick a dividend ETF no matter what, so show me which one's better. Well, like I said, I care about dividend yield and I care about dividend growth rate, and neither of the dividend ETFs could support a dividend growth rate, even though the dividend appreciation ETF should be making a case for dividends that are likely to grow in the future. So given the fact that Vanguard's high yield dividend ETF pays a higher yield, Vanguard's VYM has 399 stocks in the ETF, and Vanguard's VIG has 182. So Vanguard's VYM not only has a higher dividend yield, but they also have more diversification with the stocks in the ETF. They both pay quarterly dividends, no real changes there. If it were me at the end of the day and I had to choose a Vanguard dividend index fund, I would at this point say, 
I'm choosing Vanguard's VYM as opposed to VIG. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be choosing individual dividend stocks. And as I've mentioned on previous videos, I own them outside of my retirement accounts and inside of my retirement accounts, I own Vanguard index funds. Woohoo! Hey, so now is your time to drop your two cents in the comments below. Did this answer any questions or help you learn anything new when it comes to dividend ETFs versus individual dividend stocks? Are there other topics related to dividends that you would like to know more about from me? Let me know in the comments below and I can almost guarantee you I'm probably gonna make a video about it in some way, shape, or form. Hey, so if you have not done it yet, and how have you not done it yet? Make sure to hit that subscribe button below and click on that notification bell to be alerted to all of my weekly videos. I put out a new video every Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes that turns into Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm married, I've got four kids, and I'm also focused on getting new content out to you, my audience. Hey, so the great news for you is even though this video is about to end like right now, well, I don't have a watch on. Even though the video is about to end like right now, the learning doesn't have to stop. You can click on these videos right over there.